have followed my channel for a while, you'll know that most of my content here is based around CAD and 3D printing. For the past year, really, I've pretty much invested all my time and energy into learning CAD, Fusion 360, and all the other software that comes around 3D printing. Learning all these skills has really enabled me to bring my designs into the real world. You know, and, and still to this day, that's probably one of the coolest things I can think of. You know, to be able to design something in the comfort of your own home and manufacture it and bring it into the real world as this physical object that you can touch and move around and have practical uses for. To me, that's just incredible. And with that in mind today, I've got something pretty exciting to show you. So let's go take a look. So, uh, I've decided to buy my first CNC router, and this is a 3018 CNC milling machine, and you can also buy the laser module here, so you can do laser engraving as well. Obviously, with this being a stock machine, you're going to be quite limited in terms of what you can cut, but for me personally, you know, this is my first machine, I'm not going to be looking to be cutting huge sheets of aluminium with this thing. This machine is just a foot in the door, and this is what I'll be using to learn all about CNC milling and the software required to do that. There is a lot to learn. It's a lot steeper a learning curve than 3D printing, but I'm really excited to learn a new skill and also just to add another awesome machine to the workshop. The machine arrived in a flat pack box. It was really easy to put together. It's pretty much entirely made of this 2020 aluminum extrusion. Uh, much like you'd get with a 3D printer, the gantry just sort of drops on and you bolt it down. One thing I will say is that this is an older model of this machine. And that's quite important, uh, especially for me anyway. With the newer models, the gantry part of the machine is made up of plastic. So usually these side pieces here, you may see on some of the newer models, are made of nylon. Generally, you want to avoid plastic frames because these machines need to be as rigid as possible in order to cut properly. Although this does look very similar to a 3D printer, the setup itself is a lot different. With these machines, your tool bit on the end here is essentially constantly being dragged through your material. So there's a lot of forces involved here. And because of that, you need to make sure that your frame is really rigid and strong. The general kind of rule that I hear is that your frame must be stronger than whatever you're cutting. So you need a really, really strong frame if you're gonna be cutting some hard metals. This kind of machine is not built really to be cutting, you know, high grade metals. This is a beginner machine as as I'm using it, you know, it's, it's designed to get you into CNC, get you learning, get you familiar with the software. And you can cut some probably quite hard woods with a few upgrades, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. If you're just looking to get into it, dip your toes in CNC milling a little bit, this is really, really good. You know, it only cost me 150 pounds and I'm probably gonna spend up to 100 pounds on upgrades, which isn't much, you know, that's a lot cheaper than a 3D printer, for example. You can really do some awesome stuff with these machines. One other thing about the plastic frames as well is that they really limit you in terms of upgrades. So the good thing about this 2020 extrusion is you can just add T-slot nuts anywhere along here and add parts to the machine. If you've got solid nylon sides, you're pretty much limited unless you cut your own nylon or do some further modifications that are probably gonna be a little more complicated. So as I said, the machine is very similar to a 3D printer. You've got your X, Y, and Z axis, and I can actually give you a tiny little demo of those now. Everything for this machine is controlled via software on a PC. The machine itself runs on software called Gerbil. This is free software that comes on a disc with the machine. The software is what's used to move the machine around and perform all your cuts. I'll be making some separate videos on how to use this software and how you can get set up and those kind of things. So if there's anything specific that you wanna know, let me know in the comments below. So just as an example, I'm gonna show you now turning on the spindle motor using software. So there you can see that's probably quite loud, but that's spinning at its maximum RPM. And you can actually slow it down, so you can step it down. So that's about halfway. 
and that's right down. You'd never be using it this slow. Um, typically, you run these usually at full speed or just a little bit lower, depending on the, the quality of the cut. Again, we've got a bunch of arrows on the screen here that I can show you. So if I go um, to the right, you can see that you, you've got full control over the machine basically from the software. Uh, the same goes for the, um, the Y axis. So we can move that backwards, we can move that down. And you can see as well that I've clamped a block of wood down here where you typically perform a cut. And the machine comes with these clamps as well. I did have to buy some longer bolts for me to hold thicker blocks of wood like this. But I'm going to do some upgrades which I'm going to talk about next that will resolve those issues on their own. And just give you a bit more wiggle room in terms of what you can cut on this machine. I actually did a few test cuts with this machine. It's all stock. I've, there's no upgrades on this yet. And honestly, I was really impressed with the results. So I've got some footage of that, so I'll show you that now. So this was my very first cut. And to do this, I used uh, Instructables Easel software, which is all online. I'll leave a link to that below if you're interested. But as a first example, uh, I just thought I'd try out some text, and that's my name. I also decided to try out this bat symbol, which was pretty cool. I just imported an SVG, and you can cut any shapes out that you want. Now I'm using a V-carve bit to do this, as this is the only bit that was supplied with the machine. I've recently bought some extra bits, which I'm hoping to try very soon. Next, I wanted to try something a bit more complicated. So I created a simple block with some angled extrusions in Fusion 360. I also generated the tool pass for this in the manufacturing environment inside of Fusion 360. This was my first attempt at this, and I had no idea whether it was going to fail or succeed. Fortunately, it worked first time, and I was really pleased with the results. For a first attempt, I don't think that's too bad at all. And bear in mind, I'm using a horrible scrap block of wood. The angled extrusions look quite smooth. There's a little bit of furring on them, but you know, over time I'm gonna to learn to tweak the settings and get better cuts. What I love about this machine is that it's actually a DIY kit. It comes fully disassembled. You have to assemble the whole thing. And in doing so, you realize that there's not really all that much to it and it's not that complicated. You can easily make some modifications to this machine that'll turn it from an okay machine into a great machine. And I've already got some parts that are going to do that. One of the upgrades I'm going to do is a spindle motor upgrade. So the one that comes with the machine is a 100 watt motor. And you can tell when it's doing its cuts, it does bog down a little bit. It struggles and you always wanna have more performance available than you actually need. Uh, this is generally good for the health of components as well. So one of the things I've done is I've bought a 300 watt spindle motor. This one is a lot faster. I believe this goes up to 12, either 10 or 12,000 RPM. Whereas this one only goes up to around 7,000. So that's going to be a significant improvement in power. And there's a lot more torque available from this one as well. So there's going to be some modification, print some parts, and we can drop this one in as well. Now, due to the spindle upgrade, I've also decided to upgrade the stepper motor here as well. So here's a, the new stepper motor. This is a NEMA 17, which has slightly more torque than the one that's on here. And you can actually see that it's just a little bit bigger. and It's just a little bit more torque to lift up that heavier spindle motor. Another essential thing that I really want to add is limit switches. So these will be massive in assisting the software. So what you can do is, like you see on the 3D printers, they auto home. So you can set these switches up on here. As the machine moves over, it comes, clicks the switch, and the machine just knows exactly where it is. And that saves you having to calibrate all the time. Limit switches are always useful as well, especially if things go wrong on the machine. If an error occurs, you don't want it to keep slamming into the side of the machine, and it would eventually destroy itself. So limit switches are essential. Another thing that I want to upgrade is the height of the gantry. So these pieces that come with it, uh, quite short really. What that does is it limits you in terms of what you know the thickness of material you can cut but also it can be quite frustrating here as well with your clamps. If that were to move back if you're working on something bigger your clamps would actually hit the rails. Now you can cut them obviously but I'd rather have that freedom there to slide back and forth and then just add some Z height here on the spindle, which is a separate upgrade again. One of the biggest advantages I think of adding height to the uh, gantry is that you're gonna be able to install a wider variety of milling bits. 
So you can see this one has quite a large shank on it. The problem with that really, with the current setup, is that the shank only goes so far up into the collet here. So what you end up doing is losing cutting height. So you're losing Z travel due to the length of the shank. Most of the best parts tend to, do tend to have a longer shank on them. So this is one of the milling bits that came with the machine and this is a V carve piece. These are typically used for carving out fine details in a block. The main thing you can see here is just how much shorter that is than this other piece I've got here. The shank on this one is a lot bigger. So by adding a bit more height here to the gantry and giving yourself more wiggle room for the Z travel, what you're actually doing is increasing the um, compatibility of the machine with different uh, milling tools. So you'll be able to buy a larger variety of tools that will fit your machine and you're not going to lose that Z height here. So that's pretty much one of the main reasons why I want to add some height here to the gantry. Another thing that really eats into your Z axis travel is if you use a spoiler board on the bottom. So typically you use a spoiler board if you're looking to cut out an entire shape out of a block of wood. So in order to do that, the reason you need a spoiler board is because you don't want to end up damaging your milling bit. Say for example, I wanted to carve out a shape of this entire block. If I were to come all the way down, eventually I'm going to hit the base plate before I've made a full cut and that would damage the bit. So what you do is you put a block of wood down or, or a board, typically the size of the base plate, that you don't mind causing damage to, right? So you're not damaging the bit, but you spoil spoiling the board underneath, hence the name. But what that does, say for example, you've got a spoiler board here that's five mil thick and you've also got this milling bit that has a large shank. Before you know it, you've only got a probably 10 mil there of Z travel. It all adds up and eats away at your Z travel. So that's one of the reasons I think the gantry height upgrade will really open things up for you and add some diversity to the things you can cut. Another common problem you see with this machine is just a slight bit of wiggle here really. Due to these smooth rods, they're not super strong. You know, I'm, one of the things you get with that is flex. So if you're cutting a hard material, you can see there's a lot of flex there. You can see me moving that. And that's not good really. It's okay for softwoods where your milling bit is just gonna fly through it. But if you're cutting something pretty strong, you want that to, to be rigid, right? You don't want that to move whatsoever because it's gonna affect your cuts, the quality of your cuts, and eventually it'll damage your, your bits as well. So one of the ways we can combat this is to add an additional x-axis rail. So I bought uh, an additional smooth rod and I'm going to make some mods and add a additional rail to the back. So the problem that we've got with this wiggle, while this moves up and down, the reason it's doing that is because this bottom bar is flexing back. So I'm thinking what I can do for relatively cheap, you know, there are other ways you could strengthen this up, but a low cost way of fixing this is to just add another rail here at the back and that'll just help eliminate some of that movement as well. And what I plan to do is completely redesign this spindle holding part and incorporate another section at the back where I can insert the bearings that are gonna move along this. And uh, that should be a fun little project in itself. And uh, it'll be really interesting, I think, to see if it actually makes a difference. Personally, I really do think it will. It'll help eliminate that flexing and ultimately will result in better cuts. So as you can obviously tell, there are a few upgrades that I'm going to be doing in the future. I'm not going to do them all in one go. I'm going to kind of stagger them out. So I'm probably just going to upgrade the spindle on its own first, see how that performs. It may be that I don't need the additional rail, but I think I will when I start moving to harder materials. But the good thing as well, you know, the machine is cheap to buy and the upgrades are also not very expensive either. And what you get in the end is a pretty awesome machine you can cut a lot of diverse materials on. I'm just gonna, as I said before, push this to the limits, see what it can do. And you know, if you guys are interested as well, you can go and buy your own and pretty much mimic what I've done. The only other thing I didn't mention was that to power the spindle motor, I've had to buy a separate power supply for the back. So the power supply that comes with this little board at the back here is, um, is limited in terms of its output power. It can power this spindle, but if you want anything stronger, you have to have an independent power supply and you can either control it with a um, little potentiometer or you can just have it running full speed at all times. Um, so again, that's, that'd be something I'd mount on the back here is just a small little power supply. You'll see all that in the weeks to come. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how far I can push this machine. And I'm pretty excited to do that. You know, It's always fun to make something your own and I'm, I'm going to try and improve it as much as I can.
So hopefully you guys are excited as I am about this new machine. For such a budget little machine, it's really not too bad at all. And I've had a pretty good experience with it so far. Obviously I'm gonna do some upgrades. That's just my own personal preference so that I can cut some harder materials and get a little bit better results. I'm just looking forward to seeing what I can do once I've added in those upgrades. Overall, this little CNC here is gonna open up so many opportunities for me, especially with um, computer-aided manufacturing in Fusion 360. That's something I've wanted to get into for such a long time, and only now really have I got the necessary skills to start tapping into that and exploring that awesome world. You can expect a lot of videos about this machine from me, I'm sure there are a lot of others out there as well that come from a 3D printing background and are pretty curious and keen to also dive into CNC, you know, the, the, the milling machines. And they're really awesome machines and there's so much to learn. I'm going to document all the upgrade processes and I'm also going to create some videos, much like I did with Prusa Slicer and things like that, where I just sort of show you how you can perform your first cuts, getting the machine set up, all that good stuff. Beginner style videos. Longer term, I plan to try out some more complex kind of 3D relief, 3D carvings, and basically just try and push this little CNC to its limits. Remember, if you're new to 3D design and you're looking to start learning, go check out my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. I leave a link in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.